This video is brought to you by Manny Ortiz. Me, myself, I've got presets. They're amazing. Links, my wife is calling me. Some of the best out there, I promise you that, including the Golden Hour Lightroom presets, my latest ones. Check out the link in the description. Canon just announced the 24 megapixel R6 Mark II and the 135 millimeter F 1.8L with image stabilization. I spent 48 hours with this combo in San Diego shooting all kinds of sports like BMX, tennis, diving, rowing, and I have a ton of footage that I want to share with you. Is this camera the Sony a7 IV killer? Let's find out. Full disclosure, Canon did fly us out to San Diego to test these cameras out, but they had no input in this video. I'm not only gonna say positive things, there are some things that I didn't like about the camera. And also this is a Halloween special. So there's a quick turnaround in this video. I didn't have time to script. I'm literally gonna go trick or treating right after this with my daughter and mama bear. That's why I'm dressed like this, right? My daughter likes Care Bears because they have hearts on their butt, you know? I mean, I, I guess I get it. If you are not familiar with my channel, I shoot everything, right? I shoot Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, um, on Canon side, I'm very familiar with the Canon R3. This is like my go-to sports camera. Uh, I shoot with the Canon R5 regularly for portraits. Um, I also shoot with the Canon R7, not all the time, but I have done some studio shoots with this. And also I did the, the release uh, for the R7. So I'm very familiar with Canon products. I'm also very familiar with Sony. That's my primary system. And I just used the Sony a7R5 with the new AI autofocus. And I'm telling you this because I am gonna be using these cameras as a point of reference. There is a lot to cover on this camera, but I've been so excited to share my thoughts on the autofocus system, all right? Because right now, autofocus is the thing, right? AI, like I'm always thinking about what's the next big thing. Well, it was megapixels, it was 8K, now it's AI with autofocus. Sony just released theirs. S S Canon already had their version, it's called, you know, deep learning. And in a, in a sense, it's the most advanced autofocusing system that I've ever used. And I'm talking about the one in the R6 Mark II. The subject detection specifically, because Canon or Sony doesn't have subject detection where you can just leave it on auto and it'll just find what you're looking for. You have to be more specific. You have to pick. You want people, animals, planes. You can do the same with the R3. And the R3 in acquisition is faster than the R6 Mark II because this has a stacked sensor. But its ability to find subjects in auto and figure out what it's looking at, sizing it up with the boxes, the R6 Mark II is more advanced. But let me take you to San Diego where I put this to the test. For our first event, we shot some BMX. Never did this before in my life. One thing you're gonna notice is the camera how and how far it can identify subjects, right? I was at 200 millimeter. Look how small they are in the frame. And unlike other cameras I've used when you're shooting, let's say in wide area auto, it rarely chose to focus on something in the foreground or the background. The focusing system did incredible tracking, but it did get lost at times. But let's be fair here. I do think that any camera would struggle here because the riders would become large and then really small in the viewfinder when they were hitting their jumps. And being in wide area, it gave the camera many more options to find focus. Next, I shot some rowing on a nearby river with the 70 to 200. One thing I want to highlight here is notice how fast I can switch the autofocus from person to person. And all I have to do is just flick the joystick from left to right. Same works with the eyes when there is only one subject. And it doesn't matter whether I'm half pressing the shutter or not. This is one of the biggest advantages of using a Canon autofocusing system versus Sony where I have to map a custom button to switch from eye to eye and now we are able to switch from subject to subject like the Canon with the new AI autofocus that's in the Sony a7R5, but it requires a separate button to activate it, making it a two-step process instead of one. Next, we shot some athletes in an obstacle course. 
I used only the 135 millimeter f1.8 for these. Now, this wasn't a great place to get, let's say, like a money shot, a banger shot, but it was a good test for the autofocus and how it can track people with a lot of distractions around them, right? The overall stickiness. I feel like these clips kind of speak for themselves. They were moving so erratically with their face not even visible most of the time. When the two guys were racing on the ropes though, like I thought it would have struggled for sure. It would lose them and like focus on the ropes or the railings in front of them, but it held on for dear life. Oh, and of course I had to do my thing. I took a few portraits of the female athlete with all the tattoos, using some of the shadow lines to create interesting light. She didn't know how to pull, so what I did, I just had one hand grab it onto her bun and the other hand leaving it by her waist on her leg, and this is this is what I got. Next, we shot some tennis, and this is where the autofocus performed the best, in my opinion. Uh, it didn't matter it, where I stood on the court. It was able to detect the eye from even a really good distance away. One of the girls was wearing sunglasses, and even though the IAF still activated, it would quickly switch to face, or body AF if it was like thrown off a little bit by that. Toward the end, I started to shoot with the players being backlit to see how it would perform that way. I wasn't using a lens hood and the sun was going directly in the lens. And despite the kid not even facing me for these, like the AF had no issues. Next, we shot some swimmers diving in the pool. One thing I noticed throughout the day was how the autofocus didn't act much different when I had it in auto versus when it was on people. I was switching back and forth for the divers and it would behave almost the exact same way. Now, for example, even setting it to people, it would briefly, let's say, focus on the tree behind the guy or the railing or the diving board before it would go eventually to the subject. Feel like this is me being extremely picky because it did great, but again, it is something that I noticed throughout the day and my overall experience with the subject detection. Truthfully though, I don't have much to complain about. The way the camera tracks people, even when they're not looking at the camera, is pretty incredible. I would say that about 90% of the time, the focus did what I wanted it to do. Um, to be fair, this is a pre-production camera, so it's kind of hard to judge, but I do feel that the times that it was focusing on different objects that I didn't want it to focus on, if I were just a little bit more specific with the camera, like all I gotta do is just tap the person that I wanna focus on and it would have stayed with them versus letting the camera kind of do its thing or just setting up an autofocus zone. I know we're getting spoiled, but just setting a zone and giving the camera a little bit more of a narrow window to look through, I think would have alleviated a lot, some of those issues with the subject detection. So th this is the other thing I wanna mention is with the subject detection, Again, it's so powerful in auto. The thing that I noticed is that whether you're an auto and people, it really doesn't matter. For me, it acted very similarly. Overall, I do think that the subject detection is incredible. I do feel like it might need a tweak where it's not as aggressive and maybe when you switch to people, it can ignore objects more than when you're in auto and it could just focus more on the person. Those are my only complaints. They have a newly developed 24 megapixel sensor in here. It is a small resolution bump over the 20 megapixel sensor in the R6 Mark I. It is not stacked like a lot of the rumors said, and it does not have 30 megapixels, obviously, which I feel like a lot of people would have expected it to have, like, you know, the A7 IV in the same price range. But I think in combination with the Digic X processor, this sensor really shines when you're shooting 40 FPS, 40 FPS electronic, 12 mechanical. So there is rolling shutter, but I expected it to be much worse. Like the little brother, the R7. Um, I shot this as a second body at a professional sports game. The Jello is just crazy when you're panning with this camera and you're shooting high burst. I mean, it, the whole image just shifts. With the R6 Mark II, as I'm moving the camera, in burst mode, yeah, there is a little shift in the image. It's not terrible. When shooting sports like tennis, yeah, the apex of the swing, you're, you are gonna get the racket bending and the ball kind of distorting. And depending on your angle, you're not gonna see it. It's not gonna be as noticeable. So I found that the 40 FPS for sports is usable. It is usable. It is not as bad as the R7, 
and the fact that you can shoot up to 110 shots which is like two and a half seconds roughly it's very usable because i rarely ever hold the shutter that long i usually i'm pretty good at timing when i want to get the shot so very impressed with the capability the speed for the price especially comparing it to the sony a7 IV, which is a competitor 10 fps 10 frames per second versus 40 which is more than i mean even the r3 and the a1 you're getting more one thing i wish the r6 mark ii had was the ability to shoot at a higher electronic shutter speed this one caps out at one eight thousand of a second and at times with the 135 f1.8, I actually stopped my lens down from f1.8 because it was just too bright outside. I wish just giving us at least like one sixteen thousand of a second. That would have been cool. Ergonomically, there isn't much of a difference between the version two and the version one R6. I'll tell you what, they moved the on and off button to the right side. Not a fan of the placement there. Just muscle memory thing. I don't know. I'm not a fan of it being there. Uh, they have a 3.69 million dot EVF. One thing to note is the battery life has dramatically, dramatically improved. So it's rated over 700 shots on one battery. And I'll tell you what, I shot an entire day, an entire day out there in, in the heat, shooting all, all the sports. And I probably shot over like 1500 images on that day. And the battery was still at one bar at the end of the day. That was the first day that we went out there. It was really incredible. So huge bump on battery life. One other thing I don't like about the, the body of the camera, and this actually just leads into the video aspect. So let's just get into that. So it has a micro HDMI port. Uh, again, that's like, that's uh, like video, you have 4K 60, up to 4K 60, no crop. This is a 6K downsampled image full width of the sensor and that goes for 4k 30 as well 10 bit and that right there again almost every all the specs in this camera are a little better than the a7 IV. the a7 IV gives you that crop at 4k 60 this one does not give you a crop and it's a down sampled image um you get full hd you have 180 frames per second now versus like the base standard of like 120 FPS on most cameras. So they included false color. And if you've never used it, it is such an intuitive way of exposing your image. They included it in this mid tier camera. And just for comparison purposes on Sony, um, there's nothing like that on even their base cinema line camera like the FX3 on the a7s3 not on any of those cameras that's a, that's a huge that's a huge thing that they included in here that's going to get people to really they're going to open their eyes to this camera like this this could be the one again that's a amazing tool to have it has a movie pre-recording function which you can set to three to five seconds time code c log three all the things that you would expect on a canon camera we think that the 4k 60 no crop is a huge benefit a, a big point it's, it's, a, it's a big talking point with this price range of camera because you're looking at the a7 IV which is its direct competitor and it gives you that crop that always just haunts me sometimes I have to just move everything you know it's such a pain so now we're going to talk about the 135 millimeter lens or maybe not say goodbye it's time to trick or treat <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish it tomorrow. All right, we're back in the studio. Hope you had a nice Halloween. Uh, we're going to talk about the Canon 135.18. The Canon EF version, the 135 F2, was one of my favorite lenses of all time. That is the only lens that I carried over when I switched to Sony back in the day, to the A7 II, because that is, is such a legendary, it's such a, and it's such a unique focal length. I made a whole video about how this is probably the best portrait focal length lens of all time the 135 um i own the 135 1.8 for sony the results are always magical so the canon 135 has ibis very interesting it's the only one with ibis out in the market that i've ever seen it's interesting for video i could see it being useful um i did some handheld video test and it 
it does make a big difference, especially when with combined uh, with the combined IBIS of the body. There is a pretty nice difference there for handheld video. The modern 135s like the Sony, even the Sigma 135-18 have 11 aperture blades. The Canon, I believe, has nine aperture blades. That's what I remember from the presentation. And I did notice in some of the shots that the bokeh, even toward closer to the middle of the frame, were football shaped. But at the same time, a lot of the bokeh from the 135 Sony also football shaped. I guess it's just how the lens design is. Um, and also, with, you know, with the lens design, 135s, you shouldn't shoot without a lens hood. And I, I have a bad habit. I never use a lens hood. When the sun's coming in to this lens, they don't flare up nice. Like an 85 can give you maybe like a nice flare. It doesn't matter how many coatings you put at the end. They always flare up. Something with the, how the, the elements are. It just, it flares up in a bad way. Uh, with the Canon, um, I did notice when I was taking the backlit tennis shots, that I was getting like this streak of colors and through the middle of the image, some flaring. At first it wasn't that bad and then I realized, okay, this is image ruining kind of flare. So that was on me though, I didn't use a lens hood. But overall though, I think the lens looks really nice. It's a little wider, a little taller than the Sony. They both got an 82 millimeter filter thread. It's about the size of the Sigma. That's what I can think about. Yeah, the Sigma's a little bit bigger than the Sony. And on the plus side, you get IBIS. And it's not that much more expensive. It's like $2,100. And the Sony's like $1,900, $1, $1,900. So a little bit more, and you do have that, that IBIS in. So I was really happy to see that they included that in the lineup. Now all we need is the, what, 35-1-2, 35-1-4 L, and a couple of wider lenses, like the 24-1-4 L. When looking at the $2,000 to $3,000 budget range, you know, we got the Sony a7 IV holding its own, one of the best hybrid cameras on the market. You got the Canon 6D Mark II coming out now. And what's on the spec sheet, the Canon pretty much beats the a7 IV in almost every way. There's a lot of little things that Sony has that the Canon has, but for the most part, the matching specs, Canon is beating it out. Um, it's interesting because I, if, if it were me, if it wasn't for the lens situation with the third party lens situation, the 6D Mark II, the R6 Mark II makes more sense because you do get a lot more, so much more speed. You get crazy, I mean, 40 FPS. My A1 does 30, R3 does 30, yeah, you don't get the rolling shutter. But still, do you see how it's usable? Like if, you, if you're if you shooting at an angle, at a bat, of a bat or a golf club, of yeah, of course, you're gonna get the rolling shutter. You still got 12 mechanical, but for almost anything else, it's usable, 40. How are you ever gonna miss, you're not gonna miss a shot using 40, you know, 40 FPS. Then you got the 4K 16 no crop with no time limit. You got the false color. So I think that it's a very, very, very compelling camera for the price. Same price as the R6 Mark I. Um, again, they just got to let the third party back in. Please let the third party lenses back in so that people can get to the Canon system without having to open up a credit card to buy a one lens. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Once they do that, um, I can highly, highly, highly recommend a camera like this. I mean, I still recommend it, but we just need those third party lenses. This is a very long video and I had no script, so it's usually not good. Uh, if you made it up to this point, thank you very, very much. That means that maybe you hold my opinions, you believe my opinions have some kind of weight, um, which I appreciate, you know, because integrity is, YouTube is all about keeping your integrity very high. If you can't trust someone, they're, they're, they lose all value. That's just one of the things that I've learned throughout this journey. And um, I try to be real, I try to be upfront about everything, tell you it like it is. I have a lot of experience with these cameras. I may not know everything like DP Review does, like Gerald does, like even like Jared. Very good with technical details. I'm not there yet, but I'm constantly learning. But I feel like from a usability standpoint, I can provide a unique perspective on these cameras because I use everything. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Sometimes I wish that I could just sell everything and just stop with the gear stuff because it, it, it also interferes with my creativity. 
that is all for this video. Um, if you want to support me, check out some of my Lightroom presets, retouching tutorial, even the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish, which is right there. Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish, the, one of the best modifiers on the planet. You want to check that out, link will be down below. Hopefully there's no more cameras coming out <laughs> because I'm tired. But anyways, um, I'll talk to you later. Later.